Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I decided to make a quick video because a video I made probably a month ago uh, and have put up, it got a lot of responses from people who are arguing points that they really don't understand. And this is something that I think that if we're going to write our own programs, we're going to coach people we need to understand. And I am not making this in any shape, form, or fashion as a anti-dumbbell video. I prescribe dumbbell lifts to many of my clients. Okay? I prescribe dumbbells for weak point training for a number of my clients. I want to make that clear. I actually write it into their programs and we actually train dumbbells hard if they're a beneficial movement with the equipment they have available for a weak point. Like we, we do them for weak point hypertrophy. And I have no issue with dumbbells. As I said, I have clients who pay me who I prescribe dumbbells for them. But what you need to understand is that the only benefit to dumbbells, the only real benefit is improved range of motion. Okay, that's it. All right, sometimes unique bar pass, but it usually comes down to range of motion. And if you're not using them for extra range of motion, you're largely wasting your time. Now people will say, but you know, you have things like being able to pronate and supinate the wrist and on a curl and it's like, how does that cause muscle growth? I mean, and I'm asking that as a serious question. Do you, do you have any actual evidence or reason to believe that that's going to cause your biceps to grow faster? Oh, you don't. Exactly. So it's not actually something you know for a fact is useful. It's just something you read in bodybuilding magazines for years. That's not a particularly effective growth mechanism for the bicep. You're not going to stimulate much muscle fiber recruitment. Maybe if you did a supination and pronation on some sort of machine designed for that where you could get maximum resistance, but you're not creating any real fatigue. And it, it is fatigue that causes hypertrophy. If you're not fatiguing a function, you're not getting any growth out of it, which is going to come over to my point about stabilizers in a minute. But the ability to sometimes move your hands more just increases range of motion. Because people will point out, well, with a, a dumbbell chest press, you can bring the hands closer together at the top. Yeah, you're increasing range of motion. Just like at the bottom of a dumbbell press, we can usually get a little, little deeper. We can get a couple inches deeper than we can with a barbell, particularly if you have a big chest already. Some cases, more than a couple inches. Well, that's an increased range of motion. That's a benefit. So if you, if you have a lifter whose pecs are lagging, and the bench press and barbell benches and incline benches with a barbell are not bringing their pecs up sufficiently and dips are not currently an option or they've been getting maybe some shoulder pain or other issues trying to do dips or they can't perform dips. I will throw a dumbbell chest press to them in a heartbeat to bring their pecs up. And I'm talking about guys who are chasing a bigger bench. I have no issue with that. That's in fact a fantastic supplemental lift. No argument for me. Why? Because it improves the range of motion. And we can use a slightly lighter weight with a longer range of motion. We get a good stimulus to fatigue ratio and it might help spur the pecs into additional growth. Especially if we get a real good stretch reflex at the bottom because we can get those dumbbells really deep. Okay, That's a very pro dumbbell statement by the way. I basically just said that dumbbell presses can help bring up your bench press and make your pecs bigger. If they're a weak link and you're not getting sufficient stimulation from your other pressing. Phenomenal use of it. And it's entirely due to the range of motion. And because you can bring the hands closer together at the top, you can get a little more range of motion. Again, that's a good thing. But people will look at that and say, well... You get stabilizers involved. I'm like, could you tell me which stabilizers? Because people love to use that word. And they'll say, well, the dumbbell, you get more stabilizers than the barbell. Really, you're telling me you don't get a lot of stabilizers involved in a barbell bench press? Are you delusional? And, that, and that's a serious question. Or Do you really and truly believe that? You don't think a ton of stabilizers have to be used to do a barbell bench press? Or even weighted dips while holding onto the bar, right? Holding onto those handles and stabilizing your body. What, what stabilizers do you think it is that gets used more with the dumbbells? I, do you know what they are? Because guys love to say that. Could you name them? Are you getting extra muscle growth in those stabilizers? And if your stabilizers are weak, 
you're going to get less chest growth, aren't you? Because you're going to lose tension. I'll name one of those stabilizers for you. I'll name a big one for you, the biceps. There you go. The biceps get a little, have to stabilize a little more on that. Certain parts of the shoulder have to stabilize a little more on it. Are you contracting them to a level of fatigue? No, you're not contracting them to a level of fatigue. So you're telling me your biceps, one of these big stabilizers, it gets worked a little harder possibly with the dumbbell press. It's not going to grow from doing dumbbell presses. Well, then what's the point? What, what benefit did you get from it? If you're not getting additional muscle growth because these stabilizers come into play a little bit more that we're going to work with other exercises anyways, how did you get a benefit from it? How did it help you? And if you really want to train stabilizers, why wouldn't you do bands against a, a barbell? I mean, if you really and truly cared about stabilizers, really getting stabilizers involved, you wouldn't play with dumbbells. You would be doing band tension across your barbell. Because I promise you, that'll work those stabilizers a hell of a lot harder. You'd be doing dips. Let's try dips against bands. There you go. I mean, if you're that concerned with stabilizers on a chest movement, why in the holy hell would you use dumbbells when we have these other tools available? If that, if that was really your reason and a big deal, because I had people who say that, then, then why aren't you doing those tools? If you, if you believe that that's such an effective method, why are you not using those other tools instead? They would far more effectively do what your stated goal is. All right. What other movements can we think of? How about some dumbbell rows? Well, the one-arm dumbbell rows are actually arguably not that great of an exercise. They tend to cause injuries. Not necessary for maximum back growth. There's plenty of other rowing that's superior, in my opinion. Brings a lot more to the table. But how about two-arm rows? I'll tell you what, I prescribe this to clients. Guys who need more upper back development. I actually pretty commonly put them on a 45 degree incline bench and do dumbbell rows on a chest supported incline bench. You know what? That's a very effective movement. That is a fantastic exercise for people whose upper back is lagging. Who ends up having a lagging upper back? Guys who do tons of chin ups and not enough rows. They get big lats and their traps and rear delts and rhomboids are all weak. Right? Because chin-ups and pull-ups are phenomenal for your lats and biceps. Phenomenal. They don't really work much else in your back that effectively. So if you've done too many pull-ups and chin-ups and not enough rows, didn't build your base on rows, you need extra upper back work. You absolutely have to have it if you want to get strong. So that's one of my fixes, and it works great. Phenomenal exercise. But it's not because it's independent and you can rotate both arms. Well, you're in that nice pronated position. Well, we could do that with a football bar. Right? There you go, football bar. You don't have a football bar? You have a home gym, you need to get one. It'd be a real good idea. Well, that kind of eliminates half the reasons people claim they need dumbbells right there. One piece of equipment. There you go. Fixes everything. One barbell fixes half the reason people claim they need dumbbells. Ability to turn those hands in. Problem solved. You don't need a whole stack of dumbbells. $120 barbell will fix it. But the problem is we want to row at that angle of the chest support. The bench and stuff gets in the way. The dumbbells give us a much longer range of motion. We don't care that they're separate hands. That, that's completely irrelevant. That doesn't matter. That's not a benefit. It doesn't matter. But we get that nice, long, full range of motion. So if we really want to make sure we hit all those muscle fibers through those muscles of the upper back we're working we're doing the full range of motion, stretch and contraction. If you got a lagging set of muscles, that's the best way to bring it up quickly. We want that full stretch shortening cycle. We want a good stretch. We want a good contraction. Great for bringing up a lagging muscle, particularly muscle you need to get stronger. But it's the range of motion. Because people seem to keep forgetting that. They keep thinking things like, well, you have independent loading. No, that doesn't matter. If you have loose sloppy form that makes you cheat with one side with a barbell, that same loose sloppy form will make you cheat with the dumbbells. And you will get the same unilateral imbalances. Okay? Because people keep saying, well, they're linked together so that you can't transfer the weight. 
right? The weight is outside your hands on a barbell, right? I have whatever, 230 pounds there on those floor presses and these for high reps. The weight is almost all outside your hands. Okay? The majority of the barbell, even if you took all the plates off, is outside your hands. The collars weigh more than the bar in the middle. It doesn't matter that they're connected. You can't transfer the weight through it that way. It's all going to be on the same hand. So if you have imbalance there that causes you to push one side more than the other with compensatory strength, if you have that bad habit with a barbell, I promise you there's a 100% chance you will do the same thing with a dumbbell and you will cheat more with your weaker side even if you do them one arm at a time. Okay, you will continue to have the imbalance. The imbalance is caused by piss poor form and not being tight and training like a jackass, not because you used a barbell. All right, so let's go back to my point. The benefit of dumbbells, the only real benefit that matters is the superior range of motion. And yes, it can absolutely be an advantage and it is a useful tool. But when you start trying to create other advantages that don't exist, it's complete nonsense and you're going to mess your own training up and you definitely shouldn't be coaching or training other people. It's my opinion. It says me. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.